Okay, so <clears throat> I didn't really think I talked for 14 or 15 minutes the last one, but eh. Uh, I love my voice. I really don't. It's horrifying listening to these. But anyway, um, this this go around. Let's make it try to make it quicker. We're gonna work on the graph and function y equals cosine x, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about domain and range of both of these functions, y equals cosine x, and the previous video we talked about y equals sine x. So let's take a look at this guy right now. Uh, if we were to do the whole table thing again, right? I'm not going to do it out. Uh, if we examined all the way down to negative 360, up to 360, uh, we would discover that the function would look something like, I don't want to draw in there, but I will move it, something like this. And our function would have points, oops, got something, one and negative one. We would have points at here, 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 there, and here, here, here-ish, over here, and over yeah. And again, like sine, this function is slower or more gradual there. Then it goes faster through here, and then it flattens out. So it ends up looking like that and that. These, of course, are the values of zero along the x, this is the y-axis, and this is either theta or x, the way I wrote it, y equals cosine x, means we are talking about the, the independent variable, variable being x, and along the uh, y-axis this value is 1, and this value is negative 1, and these values are 90 degrees. 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360, and so on. This is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 360. Okay? You will need to know these two functions. This one and, of course, the sine function, looks, which looks something like this. Maybe I should use a different... That one's tough to see. Maybe on your computer screen it's a little easier. And so sine looks like this. Oops, there. They are going to be pretty much the same function except the sine is shifted over 90 degrees in comparison to cosine, but we'll get into that later. And of course it continues in this direction in that direction uh, uh, forever, however you want to phrase it. Okay, so let's talk about domain and range. Let's split the screen so we can refer back to these images. Let's go here. So for the sine function, excuse me, for the cosine function, so that's one, the one we're focusing on right now, what would you consider the domain? Now remember, the domain, or the values for x, for which the graph exists. So if this goes forever in that direction, this goes forever in that direction, what do you believe the domain to be? Should be thinking that it's all real numbers, or that weird R thing that I don't know how to write, but something like that. And if we were talking about the range, those are the values in the vertical or dependent variable doesn't always have to be vertical, but how it depends on its graph. But the dependent variable and, or in this case, the y values. Our y values are one, negative 1 to 1. 
But does it include the values 1 and negative 1? Yes, so we can write it this way. That's just one way to write it. For sine, if we examine, we end up getting just uh, a domain of the same, oops, all real numbers, and a range of, again, negative 1 to 1. All right? 